home and that's why she goes to bed uh, she double checks all the doors and windows to make sure that they are all locked uh, but still she feels like she is being observed uh, when still on insecurity on their way they are accosted by assailants who nearly raped uh, raped them um, there is the aspect of immorality as exhibited by the two vagabonds and uh, also there is patriarchy uh, Taio and Resian burn with fury over what they thought as a tyrannical Nasila society where men thought that they had power over women this is in, instigated by that near rape incident in this chapter, chapter 10, there's use of local dialect, which is a style. For example, on page 139, Ole Supeo, his wife will consult her in Kainito, the wives of Simiren. In Kainito, which could simply mean co-wives, has been used to show that, to show the progressive of the culture and, interact, and how it is being integrated inside the book. To add on what Alaya said, I would like to bring out the fact that Tayo is one character trait of Tayo that is she, she's hopeful since after the accostment to the two vagabonds, she now hopes really longs for the day that she will join the Amakirirei to fight for women and girl child rights. The girls wait for the parents to come with a burning desire to tell them of the events of the day. Their wait does not bear fruit since their parents arrive tired and occupied with their own tribulations. The following morning, however, the girls brought out sending their father into mud of fury. Mama Miranoi asked the girls to go and live with Simiren's family. To their great delight, the girls stay at their uncle's all days filled with laughter and lessons about their tradition. The girls come to see the other side of the acacia and the reluctance of Nasila's families in sending their children to school. Uh, the prevalent themes in this uh, chapter is um, the impact of modernity or education for that matter. Uh, Resian observes that the people of Nasila were skeptical about the impact of Western education. Although modern education was now inevitable, it still made those who underwent it to leave their villages for greener pastures in the towns and cities. And uh, this education brought in like-minded people who are now threatening the Nasilian culture at this point in time. It was the Nasilian culture that was struggling to stay afloat. So we can see the impact of education on, uh, Nasi on the Nasilian culture. Uh, there is the informal education. We cannot uh, leave that one without being said. In order to understand the Nasilian culture, the girls find out that it is uh, passed from one person to another through the word of mouth. It was orally transmitted uh, from one generation to another. So from the old granny, Koko, a saying, uh, children learn a lot about their identity and from their parents, aunts, and uncles too. Cultural education was also found in the activities performed and equality shown to all children regardless of their age. Unlike in Pars May's house where um, Resian and Teio held different positions, in Simiren's house every child was equal and respect for the elders was also promoted. So that was uh, part of the informal education. In this chapter 11, we see that the author, Henry Olekulet, has uh, created suspense and tension towards the reader. We finish chapter 10 on a high note of uh, the girls being accosted by vagabonds who are intending to rape them. But throughout chapter 11, we found out that the story just dissipates. And uh, this will have you, the reader, questioning yourself what will happen next, giving you the interest of reading the story more and more. From chapter 11, we we get to learn that the Nasila culture are very furious to the Amakirei since 
he had she had snatched uh, over 500 girl, girls from different families the her goal was to ensure that female gen- genital mutilation could not be carried out and early marriages could have been stopped in the society and this is now what is being bring conflict in the society of the Nasila culture between the Amakerere and the people who are still holding on to the Ake culture in, in within the community uh, in chapter 11 we have various styles used just to mention one or two the use of metaphors um, page 144 Nasila is said to be teeming with wolves hyenas and crazy vagabonds I think all these three are referring to the evil people. Uh, greed uh, is also brought out through the same. We have the use of same page 145, you know, um, and page 146, like a dark cloud, like the proverbial greedy hyena. Uh, we have the use of a song, page 154, uh, page 154. I think that is it. Orikairo gathers up men to hunt for vagabonds who had nearly raped his girls. The hunt led by Kaelo and Pamuat is successful. But when the men are found, they seek refuge in the legs of elderly males and seek for penance. Kaelo finds out that one of the men is a close relative. Though their lives are spared, the men's families are to pay for the atrocity committed to Kailo and his family. When the girls heard of the elderly's verdict, they were incensed. However, Mama Milanoi reasons with them until Nomase is returned. Meanwhile, Kailo continued to prostrate as the clock of her daughter's impeding marriage ticked. The girls, on the other hand, had learned a great deal from their stay at the family of Simiren and were now proactive members of the society. The major theme in this chapter is uh, uh, the theme of conflict. Uh, we can see that uh, there is a conflict between uh, the people, the, 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 the Ilmolelian clan, and the Ilukumai clan, uh, because the, the vagabonds, the to-be rapists were from the Ilukumai clan, and Resian and Taio are from the clan of their father, which is Ilmolelian. So we have a theme of conflict there, and uh, according to the Ilmolelian clan, uh, the only way to solve that conflict is to go and look for those vagabonds and punish them thoroughly, and they embark on that journey. In this chapter, we can see a positive aspect of the Nasilian culture. Mama Milanoi appreciates Nasilian culture, which spares her nephew from death. She began to see the wisdom of the Ma founder, who ensured that justice was always tempered with mercy. According to Nasilian culture, if a man has stuck his, legs, stuck his head between the two legs of an old man, then he was, his punishment and life was spared despite the crime committed. Anybody who violates cultural values of Nasila culture is faced with laid down punishment. Both Ntaramuyo and Lante, who had attempted to rape Resian, and Tayo are forced to pay fines, and they are each fined two heifers. An extra heifer was fined to cover the shame that had occasionally occurred by accosting his own sister. From this chapter, we also learn that there's the theme of unity, where we get to learn that Joseph Pamwat had sent out the children, the young boys of, to their fathers meeting them so that they could at, agree and plan the way forward. Since the, we see that uh, a type of uh, the Ilmolelian clan coming together and fighting against the Il, Ilmaxen clan, bringing unity to game, since the, it, was, it was only the, we were expecting that only the Olekelo family could fight the two men who had accosted them, but you see that now it has become a clan, clan, clan-like issue. And, he, and hence it bring, it's bring out the, the, the theme of unity. We also learn that as you progress forward reading the text, you'll find out that 
now while Ole, Ke- Ole Kelo is sitting thinking to himself is now buying the idea that Ole Sudori will could be the one to handle the daughter Resian and trying to now implant the idea into his brain that it was a good idea yet in it was co- yet before he was conflicting with himself on whether to give out Resian to Ole Sudori and also goes ahead to describe uh, Resian as being a, a, a hard-headed child styles found in the chapter include use of similes. Uh, Ole Kaelo is said to be mad like a buffalo that had been infected. That's on page 156. Uh, still on the same page, he groaned loudly like one in pain. Um, we have another one on page 157 and 164. A number of them. We have use of idioms. Uh, the die was cast think that's like a challenge was was put forward page 159 uh, weeping boys this one has been used to describe the members of il molelian clan who had been treated so by their opponents page 166 hit the roof with indignation um, page 167 stem the tide and page 168 lull before a turbulent storm. All these are idioms and maybe the viewers and our learners together with their teachers can get meanings. Um, we have the use of sound patterns, you know, well brought out in the text. Like you get one line on page 157 that reads, uh, deep sorrowful sound sand panic stricken children streaming the repetition of the sound, which is a poetic uh, device has been put to use here. Vivid description, page 160 to 161. The scene of the approaching men, birds flying creates, and birds flying creates a mental, uh, mental pictures of the rising plane and builds up to what is about to happen. Oloisudori Lokia officially comes to pay his dowry for Resian. He specifically asked for Resian to be the one to serve them. Resian is reluctant. However, after so much persuasion, she concedes. The girls impress the guest to the pride of their parents. Oloisudori brings expensive gifts to Kaelo's family. Mother and father are very happy, but the girls have their own reservations. After entertaining the guests, Olekaelo tries to speak to his daughter, Resian, about her impending nuptials, but is rudely interrupted when the daughter mentions going to the university. It is good to note that um, when the girls were at their uncle's house, at Uncle Simiren's house, we are told that whenever an elder visited any homestead, girls were protected. Whenever an elder visited any homestead, the girls were kept away from the elders. If they were in a house which an elder was to enter, the girls would be sent away. Uh, the elders would wait outside until the girls leave. Now, um, it is contrasted here by the fact that uh, an elder of Oluisudori's teacher uh, wants um, a young girl to become his wife. And we get to know that uh, the Nasilian culture protected the girl child against the last, last full eyes of male visitors. But in this case, Mama Milanoi and her husband, Ole Kaelo, fail to protect their daughters, Resian and Taio from ingrates from hawks like Oluisudori. It is ironic that Olekaelo asks if her, how her daughter is doing, Resian. This befuddles Resian and she's confused and she does not know what to expect because her father had never acted politely. This shows how much Olekaelo had been acting aksam and corrosively towards his daughter Resian. From this chapter we learn that the the character trait of Resian was being stubborn. Since when, uh, when 
her father had, agreed, had told her to remain back at home to welcome the visitors. He, she had refused and saying that she she felt like Oli Sudori was a monster. And due to her stubborn nature, she she had gotten away the following morning since Resian was told by her father to remain behind and also help in the cooking. And this from this we learn that Resian is stubborn. Okay, uh, we have various styles again used here. We have the use of metaphors. Um, Resian has been referred to by her father. He's a newborn mongrel. Uh, we have another on page 170. The way he taught us withdraws into his shell. Uh, that's comparing to, that is the father, Ole Kaelo. Uh, we have two others on page 178. The use of a simile on page 171 um, and vivid description about Oloi Sudori as he comes to visit with many gifts. The many uh, wrists he was wearing, all made of gold, expensive dress, uh, dress I mean uh, clothes, and the gifts he brings to the family. Ole Kairo and uh, Mama Milanoi visits Oloi Sudori and enjoy the glamour and beauty of the man's wealth. After the visit, Ole Kairo believes that he has made the right decision for his daughter, despite the uncertainty in his heart. Another problem is that Resian won't go that easy without a fight. However, they plan to stage a kidnapping if Resian resists. On the appointed day that Lesian is to go with her husband, or is Dori alive in time with a constant including an atheist if the girl refuses? Or is Dori informs Lesian that she is now his wife. Lesian runs away from home to confront her father who confirmed the betrothal. She is enraged by her father's open betrayal. Her anger leads to a shouting match in her father's office. After the bitter confrontation, Resian runs away and follows Oralin Koi. Um, from the beginning of the text up to where we are at the moment, <coughs> uh, we get to learn that uh, Resian is punished more by, by her father more than any one else in the Nasilian society. And uh, here, it comes, it emerges, uh, you know, it explodes that even Ole Kaelo goes to the extent of slapping uh, his daughter, Rissian. Uh, when your daughter runs to you with such a problem and then you slap her, it shows how much you resent her, how much you hate her. Uh, so there are themes that emerge from this particular chapter, and one of them is, um, of course, materialism. Uh, we, we, are, we are shown the material, uh, the affluence, the pomposity in which Oloisudori lives. Uh, he takes Mama Milanoi and Ole Kaelo to a guided tour of his vast estates in Nakuru and Naivasha. Uh, there is the theme of betrayal. We see Resian's father betraying, I mean, his own daughter. And then there is a patriarchy, that is male chauvinism, uh, where Kaelo does not regard uh, uh, feelings of Resian and actually forces her to marry. Uh, Oloisudori, and uh, in this case, Mama Milanoi has no voice to show that she she is submitting. She has submitted to the patriarchal society in which she lives in. Olekaelo and Oloisudori mercilessly hatch a plan to abduct Resian and marry her off without her consent if she does not cooperate. This displays as how much betrayal is embedded in the Nasilian culture. The 
The plan is if she decline, I will leave it at that until the evening when his men will pounce on her and abduct her. After such a heinous plan, the three of them roared with rich laughter. He's even ready to have her circumcised so that she can get married to a man she does not even love. Mama Minaldo is not blameless because she's inwardly opposed to the abduction plan but does not speak at all. She does not speak out to condemn such a wicked plan. When Ole Sudori reveals his plan to marry Resian, it dawned on her that her father had sold her. This greatly shocks her because she never thought her own father could go to the extent of selling her. He confirms the plan to marry her off to his friend Oloisudori and also shatters Resian's dream of, of joining Egerton University and doing veterinary sciences. I think, she said, I quote, I, th I thought about it all right, but decided that I'm not sending you there. This discovery makes her cry, accusing her father of hatred and betrayal by betrothing her to Oloisudori. To add salt to the injury, is that he, she, Ole Sudori went on further to slap her, just as Mwalimu said, showing his resentment towards his own daughter. One aspect of style that has been used in this chapter, we find that this vivid description, where during the morning where uh, Ole Sudori was supposed to visit their family, we are told that Resian woke up early in the morning, and when she came down the stairs, Ole Kailo was able to notice the way she had been dressed. She had dressed very well, and the way she looked beautiful, through a paragraph, and that, from that paragraph, we get a vivid description where the, she's being described as being beautiful. We also find that in in the in, in Asila culture, although Sidori was a, a very feared man, and also no one usually played games with him, since we, he was known for for his bad activities, and also goes on to to tell her that no one was to tell Resian that no one was able to play with joke games with him. And for Resian to affirm this, she was supposed to go and ask her father. On styles, we have use of similes. Uh, on page 192, Ole Kaelo uh, equates her own daughter to a goat's kid that stubbornly refused to suckle after it was born. Its owner would tuck it between his knees and forcefully open its mouth and, and tuck its mother's teeth into it. And I think this describes the, the way she, he's going to force Resian into marrying Oloisudori, a man who is the age of her father. Uh, there's another on page 185 where Resian's beauty is compared to that of a legendary beautiful Ma woman. Uh, on page 186, she was also compared to the famous English lady. Um, we, we also have, okay, we have so many similes used uh, in this chapter. Maybe just to mention the pages where others can be found to save on time, page 194, page one, uh, page 208, and page 210. Of course, not forgetting page 209. Vivid description. In page 186, I mean page 198, Resian's dress is described. And uh, when you move on to page 201, uh, there's also vivid description of how Oloisudori lastfully looks at Resian. Um, allusion has also been used. Uh, the story of Lord Egerton has been given in this chapter. That is historical allusion. Then we have the mention of Goldenberg and Anglo leasing, which are major corruption scandals in Kenya. Um, that is also historical allusion. And I think the significance of these is to foster the theme of corruption uh, that is highly associated or maybe uh, Oloisudori identifies with. The use of a song, page 186, we have a few idioms here and there, page 187, page 195, page 200, among others. A flashback and metaphors have also been used. The styles can never be exhausted. There are actually quite a number in this chapter. Before we move on, the use of hyperbole. The use of hyperbole. Um, Resian is said to be 
You know, she's going to be the happiest lady in the whole of East Africa. Uh, I think that is an exaggeration, though again, it communicates some naivety on the part of the person speaking, because if it was meant to praise, then people use the world. You say one is good or is the only one all over the world, or the happiest in the world. Lesian takes Oralin Koi for his word and runs away with him. Being desperate to get away from her parents and Oroisudori, she suffers silently behind the pickup truck to her destination. Her hopes are dashed when she realizes that Oralin Koi had kidnapped her for himself. He had no plans of taking her to Emakererei. Oralin Koi attempts to rape her, but she gets the better of him. She, however, is left for the dead. After her recovery, she wins the affection of the woman who nursed her. Thank you very much, uh, our director and producer. Um, the themes that emerge from this theme are the theme of betrayal. Resian trusted Olarinkoi to save her from her father's brutality and advance of Olisudori. And then instead of him